Call of Duty Vanguard is the 18th entry in the series. Helmed by Sledgehammer Games, and takes us back to World War II again. This time, various theaters of the war are explored, and we get a story focused on Vanguard Squad, a ragtag group of characters that are brought together under dire circumstances. Starting with the story, which again focuses on the birth of the Special Forces towards the end of the war, the best way to describe the story in Vanguard is that it's severely disjointed, unfocused, and often downright stupid. But before I dive into the story, I must comment on what's pointing to the obvious. This game received a lot of pushback due to the identity of two of its main characters, one being a black British army lieutenant, and the other being a female Russian Red Army sniper. Of course, you can guess which one stirred the greater controversy. As a black male myself, I find it redundant that we continue to have this debate and conversation about historical accuracy when it comes to inserting people of color in various entertainment mediums that tell a fictional story. Time and time again, there's a problem by what's essentially a group of racially sensitive and otherwise individuals who have no problem raising an issue whenever there's a black character that's inserted into one of these video games. Sometimes the issue is that people don't want to play as a black character. Sometimes the issue is how that black character is portrayed. Sometimes the issue is that the enemies in the game are black and that's somehow racist. Sometimes the issue is that it's not historically accurate that this black character should be the protagonist of this fictional story, which never happened because it's fictional. It happened when Watch Dogs 2 was announced. It happened when Prototype 2 was announced. It happened with Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. It happened with Resident Evil 5. We're now getting yet another dose of racial sensitivity from the gaming community with the latest Assassin's Creed. And it's like, look, as far as I perceive it, these things are just video games. Pieces of fiction that ultimately amount to nothing. I don't care about what race a character is unless said character is portrayed in a stereotypical fashion, which is usually not the case in most circumstances. That's not even to mention the controversy of New Zealand claiming that a character in the game had his nationality changed when the character is based on a real-life figure, but said real-life figure wasn't actually put in the game himself, meaning the game is meant to be viewed purely from a fictional standpoint. These so-called controversies are rather annoying. I don't care about the sensitivity of gaming journalists. I don't care about consultation companies. I don't care about historical accuracy either, especially in a series like Call of Duty, which, like Assassin's Creed, like Spider-Man, like Resident Evil, is a work of fiction. Apparently, every World War II game needs to be this history museum that portrayed the war and those in it exactly as it happened. The World War II Call of Duty games have many historical inaccuracies far greater than what race or gender the main characters of Vanguard are, from the weapons you use to the vehicles you pilot to specific details of certain battles that happened as they happened. It's a stupid controversy that has no merit as an actual critique. Now, if you want to criticize the plot or gameplay design of this, then there's plenty of that to pull from. But to continuously circle the wagon on what's essentially a non-argument about a product meant for mindless consumption for the purposes of entertainment is quite frankly a waste of time. Moving away from that and pivoting into something more relevant would be this game's story, which I consider to be one of the worst scripts for a Call of Duty game. Not the worst, but it's down there. The problem that this story consistently has is in regard to how it's framed. Five characters from Task Force Vanguard are tossed into this holding cell towards the beginning of the game. They're captured and kept against their will, interrogated by a German officer, while the team aims to uncover Project Phoenix, a secret project of the Nazis. The Untersturmfuhrer, Hermann Freisinger, leads Project Phoenix, which is essentially a plan to rebuild the Nazi party after the fall of Berlin and the death of Adolf Hitler. He intends to escape Berlin, take the party underground, lead its surviving forces, and ultimately institute a Fourth Reich. Of course, that is if Task Force Vanguard has anything to say about it. On paper, this story actually sounds interesting. It's not a bad concept. The problem here is simply execution. The game relies on telling its story through a series of flashbacks to develop its characters, and it does this using random jumps that occur in different years and different battles of the war. First, we go from a battle from Operation Tonga in 1944, then it jumps back two years to a German invasion in 1942. 
Then it reverses several months back further to the Battle of Midway in June of the same year. Then it fast forwards a year to the tail end of 1943. From there, we go back and reverse again to the beginning of 1943 back in Stalingrad. Then we go back in time all the way to the Siege of Tobruk in 1941. From there, we jump a year to 1942 in some random battle at El Alamein. And while all this is happening, the actual current events of this story takes place in April of 1945. This is a fucking mess. The whole thing is a mess because the events are told deliberately in a non-chronological order, making it both frustrating and confusing to keep up with. Why not just, I don't know, tell this story in the order of events in which they actually occur, so you don't confuse and frustrate your audience? Seems to be a rather good idea if you ask me, but considering this story was written by four people, it would seem that there was a disagreement in how these events would actually play out in the game itself, is my guess as to what happened. Either that, or the reason this game jumps randomly at different points in time, is because for the majority of the current events in 1945, our main characters, which is Task Force Vanguard, is stuck in a prison cell, and they wanted to give each character enough screen time without forcing the player to be stuck with one for an extended period of time. But then, why is the campaign only six hours long? I don't understand. It doesn't matter. Regarding the gameplay, this is where Vanguard stands out a bit. It does try to innovate with some new ideas. Some of them work better than others, but essentially, the four main characters of Task Force Vanguard each have their own unique ability. Arthur Kingsley can issue squad commands to a target, be it a specific enemy or objective, which helps to suppress or eliminate targets more efficiently. Polina Petrova, or Lady Nightingale, can climb walls in the environment. She's nimble and can move quickly while crouched, retaining stealth for the element of surprise. She also has the ability to enter vents, crawl spaces, and squeeze through environmental hotspots. She's arguably the best character out of the four Vanguard squad members, and a personal favorite of mine. Lucas Riggs is a demolitions expert who can carry up the four different types of explosives at once. Finally, we have Wade Jackson, a pilot of the U.S. Air Force who has the focus ability, allowing him to swiftly and automatically target enemies and take them out in rapid succession. Aside from those elements, gun mounting from the Modern Warfare reboot returns here, after the mechanic being MIA in Black Ops Cold War. A new mechanic is also introduced with blind fire from behind cover. These are honestly some of the best ideas that Call of Duty has had, but some of them seem to be uneven. Lady Nightingale, clearly, is the standout of the four characters, and things like being able to scale walls and squeeze through tight spaces should be something that all of the characters can do, like as a general gameplay mechanic. But they're not. They could have done a better job at dispersing some of these ideas into the game, rather than making what's essentially a class system, where one class feels like it has a greater advantage over the other three. That would have been a better way to approach these ideas, at least to myself. Finally. The standout missions here would include Lady Nightingale, which of course stars Lady Nightingale, who again has the best gameplay out of the four playable characters. This is the mission where her gameplay is represented best. And we have the fourth right, the last mission and arguably the best mission in the game, since the entire squad is together where each character gets their moment to shine. If only everything that came before was more coherent. Call of Duty Vanguard is one of the weaker games in the series, mainly due to its story, which should have been written better. It has some really good ideas, but not many of them thus far have been carried over to the other games that followed this one. So I guess the final question is, what was the point of it all? If I never see Berlin again, it'll be too soon. <laughs> I can't believe I'm agreeing with you on something. Glad we're all getting along. Rising is right out of here, can't be far.